Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, pleasure to be here today to represent Invest in Israel and the Ministry of Economy and Industry um, in this very impressive event. Invest in Israel has been a partner of uh, Israel uh, Dealmaker Summit for several years, and we see this as a great opportunity to meet uh, many friends and investors and introduce to you the investment and cooperation opportunities you may find in Israel. Uh, just a few words about who we are. Invest in Israel is the government agency that acts as a one-stop shop for foreign investors interested in entering the Israeli market. We act as your account manager when dealing with different government agencies and support you throughout the investment process and even afterwards when you're already established in Israel. Uh, now, Israel is, of course, known as the startup nation with thousands of uh, technology startups and about 300 multinational companies present in the country, mainly with R&D centers. But Israel is a lot more than just R&D, and this is why I'm ex extremely pleased to have here with me today uh, Mr. Mike McNamara, CEO of Flex, one of the largest third-party manufacturers in the world with over 200,000 employees and operations across uh, 30 countries. Um, Mike has joined uh, Flex in 1994 and has been the company CEO since 2006. So uh, let's start. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, and thanks, and welcome everybody to, thanks yeah. for being here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mike, Flex has been in uh, Israel for about 20 years uh, and is currently the uh, second largest tech employer in the country after Intel. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about the history of your activities in Israel? Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to. And, um, you know, like I said, it's a pleasure to be here at, um, at uh, the conference, Israel Dealmaker Summit. We've uh, had a huge relationship and investment in Israel for many, many years, like you said. So it's been almost 20 years that we've been involved in Israel. And uh, we acquired a contract manufacturing company back in 1997. Um, it was at a time when things were different, and um, I don't call us a contract manufacturer anymore, of course, but um, it was a, uh, the, one of the larger manufacturers in the, in the area. We found the area to be interesting for the future, uh, but most important, we liked the people that we ended up meeting with at this uh, company. And um, so we started there in 1997 with one operation. Um, since then, we now are in Four different, oper four different locations with manufacturing operations, and it was expanded recently into some pretty significant design activities. So over the course of 20 years, we've added locations, we've done you know, tens and maybe even $100 million worth of investment. Um, we're up to about 3,500 people. You mentioned the second largest employer. The largest employer in Israel is, is, uh, is Intel, and they've been there since I think like 81 or 82. Um, I know because I was at Intel when um, some of the Israelis were coming across to get trained in Silicon Valley to go back to run the fab. And um, um, so we're like the second largest foreign employer. We have about 3,500 people over the course of all these um, years, and we continue to expand both in presence and location and in capabilities. Thank you. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, Israel is known as a startup nation, but uh, it's not known enough for its manufacturing ability. Well, let's face it, uh, we're not so much of a low-cost country, and uh, we don't have a substantial local market. So how do you explain uh, Flex's uh, success in Israel in the manufacturing yeah. business? Yeah, we have some of the best manufacturing we have anywhere in the company in Israel. So, um, well, 3,500 people, not everyone is working on manufacturing, but most of them. And, you know, when you find sources of information, when you find sources of innovation, when you find startup companies that are actually creating products, they need a place to go have those products made. And at Flextronics, we're the, we're the company where you can go to, you can get these products manufactured, we can work with these companies on co-innovation, we can work with these companies to... Um, co-innovate both from on a process technology standpoint as well as some of the product um, challenges that you have. We can bring them to scale. We can drive the yields to higher levels as a result of it. So it's hard to really realize the vision of being a technology hardware company, even if you're an innovator, without having the ability to actually move it to production. So, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, like a great strategy without execution doesn't really work. And this is a great case where if you actually can't bring it to market, if you can't actually bring it competitively, um, then you're not, you know, it's just not gonna work. What's interesting too about having a manufacturing base there is we're actually a great point to then scale around the world. 
So we probably have 150 different customers in Israel right now. We probably have 75 of those 150, which are actually what I would call kind of uh, in an incubation stage or in a, in a whole new product technology kind of phase where they're actually bringing their products to manufacturing. So we can actually also be the point. We have 200,000 people around the world. We operate in every technology from medical to automotive to every one of them. We can actually be a point that we can actually work with the innovation um, companies, innovators that are in Israel and, and get the process technology right. And yeah, you're not gonna consume all the products in Israel, but it's a great launch pad to go everybody else, everywhere else in the world, where those big markets are located. Now, I've read a recent interview with uh, Mich Michelle Monico, Flex Vice President of uh, Design and Engineering for the EMEA region, who said that a large portion, part of the uh, company's uh, innovation or investment in innovation actually uh, today is in Israel. So what does that mean? I mean, uh, how do you incorporate innovation into your manufacturing? Well, you know, and, you know, we think about this as being like the age of intelligence. We think about every single hardware device needs an intelligent system. And what I mean by that, it needs hardware, it needs software, it needs data. You need to be able to aggregate the data, analyze the data. You need to be cognitive. You need to move to predictive system. Um, we just heard some of that just in the last presentation. So unless you have all those things together, you know, you're not going to be able to compete in today's world of, of the age of intelligence. So what um, um, McKelly was talking about was we in this new world, if we are not finding those innovation centers, if we're not sourcing into those and tapping into those innovation centers, if we don't have our pulse on where the next technologies are coming from, we won't have the ability to you know, invest in manufacturing operations and make sure we have the process technologies to be able to build the products of the future. So our objective is to attach ourselves into any innovation center anywhere in the world. You know, we're right here in Silicon Valley. We have about 2,500 people. Uh, Israel, we have 3,500 people. Um, we've recently opened up centers in New York and in Boston and Shanghai and, and all, these, all these investments in these locations where more and more innovations occurring, we want to be able to tap into. And um, that's just basically the conversation you had um, with one of our, de with our design, um, head of European design operations. And it was basically to say, we're expanding. And uh, we find Israel as, as a uh, perfect location because um, we find a lot of talent, we find a lot of innovation, we find a lot of uh, many different industries are represented. So whether it's medical or whether it's automotive or whether it's um, telecom or infrastructure or you know, material sciences, I mean, there is such a broad range of um, technology and innovation in Israel that it's our objective to tap into that. Yeah, you've uh, had a TV interview with uh, CNBC recently where you said that uh, new technologies uh, using manufacturing such as uh, AR, like the previous session, VR, will not result in less jobs, but rather will change the way people work. So uh, how do you see the sites in Israel uh, adopting such technologies, and do you think there is any difference between your different sites globally with uh, the adaptation? So when it comes to a new technology like that, we think about participating in two different ways. So one is, we're gonna go build them. So um, I view Israel as a, a source of potential innovation in the AR AV space. They're really strong in terms of computing, you know, and processing, and in terms of next generation technologies, in terms of the integration of software and hardware particularly strong in the area of optics, if I think about being a real core driver for next generation AR, VR technologies. So we want to invest with the innovators to actually be able to build those products, to get the process technologies worked out, and to be able to scale them around the world. At the same time, as those new technologies become available, getting kind of more um, directly answering your question, we actually want to use those technologies to make our operations more streamlined, more efficient, and, and better. And if you think about taking the next generation AR technologies, you'll be able to, not even soon, but we already are, um, be able to look at a, look at a, have the, the, the work instructions streamed to the, to the to glasses themselves. And we can have, you know, the, the, the actual designer to participate in that process when there's a problem because the manufacturing guy can be looking at the product, talking about the challenge that we're having in terms of our process technology of some sort, and actually, the integration can go all the way back to the designer, and the designer can be in Israel, it could be in Silicon Valley, it could be a designer in Israel and Silicon Valley. 
and you can all participate together to go to go um, help solve the problem. So we kind of view it as a vehicle to make manufacturing more efficient, make it more robust, to speed the design through um, scale manufacturing process, and um, to get more transparency of that entire system throughout the world, and, and we'll just be able to solve problems quicker and faster. So we view it as a huge step up. But what's cool about Flex, Flex is we get to participate on both sides. Yeah. We get to go build the new technologies, and the, you know it's a whole new computer interface if you think about it, but we also get to use it. And by building it, we actually know it's coming, so we could probably use it faster and maybe better than the other guys. So we kind of view it as like two ways for us to participate in that, that new invention. Thank you. Uh, I understand that Flex manufactures about 6,000 different products in Israel. What makes it in Israel that enables uh, you to uh, have such diversity with the uh, manufacturing? Well, the company itself is extraordinarily diverse. You, you know, you mentioned we have 200,000 people around the world. We manage about 1.7 million active parts on a daily basis. That's like a lot of parts to keep track of. Um, we probably have 1,000 different customers on a, on a worldwide. We build tens of thousands of products. I don't even actually know how many products we do, but in some products they have configurations that um, go all the way up to you know tens and hundreds of thousands. So we actually have to have systems and processes that are actually ready and can handle that kind of kind of diversity. So over, over the years we've built um, the systems, the processes, the tools, the training of the people that we need to be able to manage that complexity. When it comes to Israel, it tends to be way more complex than our other operations because this isn't high volume manufacturing operations. And very often it's more technical products and it's, and like I mentioned earlier, what's interesting about Israel is the technology and the capability of, of, the, of the engineers and the scientists and, and um, the you know, what the universities are training is very broad. So it can go from automotive to medical to optics to um, material sciences to health sciences to you know, all, all these kind of ranges. And you never build anything at really at scale. Because you don't need to, you know, when you build that scale, you actually want to be closer to the actual consumption market. So, so we tend to see in Israel the broadest range of complexity that we have just about anywhere in our system. So unless they can figure out how to do that, they, you know, because just banging a cell phone down the line is not going to cut it in Israel. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, now, the Israeli government has recently announced the program to develop the uh, northern part of Israel, where a substantial part of your uh, activities. Uh, is located, uh, with a special focus on the development of, of an ecosystem in the life science and medical device uh, uh, sector. That includes industry, academia, hospitals, companies. Now, I know that Flex already operates, like you mentioned before, a design center in Haifa. And yesterday, you officially launched a new and even larger uh, design center also uh, located in uh, Haifa. Uh, so regarding the uh, medical uh, field, uh, where does Flex go with this field, and uh, how does Israel uh, can be part of that? So we think medical is one of the, the best opportunities to really add value in, in the world. Uh, you know, the amount of um, health as an expense as, as a percent of total for the world's GDP is extraordinary. In the United States, it's about 18%, continues to grow. I'm not sure what it is in Israel. I'm sure it's not that high. <laughs> But um, the percentage that we spend on healthcare is, is huge. And what's also interesting about healthcare is in the developed regions, you have an expanding population of user, you know, users, but elderly. So you're getting a higher and higher average age and, and a longer and longer um, life. In the developing countries, you have more and more people coming into the middle class. There's about 100 million people coming into the middle class every year, and once they move into the middle class, they more become active consumers of health. So you've really got two megatrends that are driving medical to be um, a huge opportunity, and simultaneously with that, it's a huge percentage of the GDP of every economy. So you've got all the ripe ingredients that if you can take technology and apply it into medical and health, you've got a huge opportunity. So we have a, we have a medical and health business at um, just about $2 billion altogether. And when we have $2 billion of revenue, um, because we're cost of goods sold for companies that we actually sell to, you know, the amount of actual medical revenue that we're actually managing, the amount of commerce from that standpoint is probably more like 10 billion. Because we go, you know, sell the syringe to an OEM and the OEM sells it for 10 times more than we sell it to them for. So it's, um, 
it's a huge opportunity. So it's a huge part of our business. It's a huge focus area. As we move into more and more of the newer technologies, things like digital health, things about all the connected technologies, about people getting older in the developed countries, one of the biggest fears they have is they don't want to move out of their homes. That, that's a bigger fear than actual death itself if you look at a lot of the surveys. And you also have um, health itself that has made a lot of advancements. So you tend to have a lot more chronic diseases. You don't just have people dying of a heart attack. You usually have more chronic diseases that you actually have to manage on an ongoing basis for longer periods of time. And that all lends itself to technology solutions. Um, the whole wearables um, drive, the whole um, connecting with your doctor on a, on a real-time basis, the whole you know, charting of your data and keeping track of your data and giving you alerts and, and tracking you and even know how often an old elderly person goes into the refrigerator as, as to whether or not they're being healthy by eating or they're, they're forgetting to eat. So all this is creating an opportunity for, for us to be um, part of that medical community. We see a lot of it in, in Israel, so that's all gone well, and um, we continue to expand. So our Haifa Design Center is, we went into a new enlarged design center just this last week, but um, probably the rap most rapidly growing over the last five years, and probably will keep being the most rapidly growing design center maybe over the next five years. Oh, You've mentioned uh, connectivity, um, and you talked a little bit even before about uh, connected cars, autonomous driving. Uh, which, of course, in Israel right now, it's a very hot area, especially with the uh, Intel Mobileye Mobile Mobile deal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you talk a little bit about your strategy in this uh, sector and how you see our Flex's involvement in it and, of course, how Israel can fit in with this uh, strategy? Yeah, you know, we have a, we have a pure automotive business that's um, getting close to $3 billion. Um, but what's interesting about automotive and, um, you know, Mobileye had a great, great result, um, obviously. So that's a big congratulations for the for that, you know, for all of Israel, I think. But um, automotive is, or autonomous vehicles, once you move into autonomous vehicles, it's different. So the amount of data an autonomous vehicle actually generates is like 400 times higher than what an individual person generates all day. And that's only if the autonomous vehicle is moving for like an hour a day. So the amount of um, effort it has to, the amount of data that it has to process in order to be effective is off the charts. So what's interesting from a flex standpoint is we have a huge business in datacom and telecom. So we've been working with the telecom providers for years and years and years. So we're one of the largest, if not the largest, supplier of equipment for 3G, for LTE, for 4G, for, you know, 5G is not out yet, but you really need 5G to get to the zero latencies communications that you need for autonomous vehicles. So now an automobile needs the telecom system to be effective. It's got all kinds of optical systems. That's why Mobileye was effective. You know, it's got all the optical systems, and you have to process um, this in radar. Um, and now, all of a sudden, you actually need compute power in the car itself in order to be able to process the, the video and the data and the images. So now, all of a sudden, the car is not a car. The car is like a massive computer, and it needs optics, it needs radar, it needs automotive-grade manufacturing, it needs uh, servers, it needs storage. It actually has to have in-car compute processing power. And what's interesting is every one of those product categories we already have a huge business in. So what makes it interesting for us is to be able to use all those different technologies as a real differentiator. Because the typical automotive companies and the typical tier ones that have supplied the automotive companies for years don't have server expertise. They're not working on the next generation 5G systems. They're not, you know, maybe not looking at optical systems. And when you put all that together with the fact that we do the do um, automotive grade manufacturing at scale, it's an interesting possibility for us. And a lot of these technologies are coming out of Israel, so, and like we're in the middle of Israel, so it's kind of a great spot to participate with them and use all of our technologies to, yeah. to develop. Now, you've been with Flex for a little over, over 20 years. Uh, where do you see Flex going in 20 years' time? You know, <laughs> you know that's, a, that's a really hard question. Um, you know, if someone can, Things they can actually tell you what 20 years looks like from now, it's like, I'm not so sure, because the, uh, the rate of change that's going on in the world today is off the charts. And, and um, I actually don't think you can predict 20 years from now, but here's, here's the thing that I think is the most important thing. And I was, I was recently in a panel that was hosted by Bill Clinton, the former president of the United States, and you know we all talked about the, 
the challenges that we all see, and some people talked about the challenges of you know, oil or you know, integrating India or the challenges in, in some of the you know, difficult areas of the world. And you know, kind of the thing I said was, the most important thing to me is that we have a company with a culture of agility. Because you actually don't know what 20 years looks like anymore. And um, so I think the most important thing for any company today is to make sure that you're around in 20 years, that you're still thriving. And I think in order to be around in 20 years, you have to thrive on change. You have to accept change, you have to see it, you have to accept it, you have to embrace it, and then you have to thrive on it. And you're not gonna do that unless your company itself has a culture that when they see change, and, and we sit and say, we all gotta go right, that the company actually goes right. If the company sits around and goes, well, I don't know if right's the right thing, or we ought to be going left, and, and, it, and it actually can't adjust to the change in the marketplace, I think you'll, you'll fail. And I think we're seeing a lot of companies fail. A lot of them are popping out of the S&P 500 at a, at a rate mm -hmm. that's faster than they have for yeah. forever. So I think um, the most important thing is to, have a, to be agile, to deal with the change that's coming. There will be change coming. You have to adapt. You have to have processes systems that actually embrace that change. And you have to have a culture that can, that can move with it. So the answer is we're for sure going to be around in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Thanks. And, uh, I'm not one... sure I'm going to be running in 20 years, but I might be on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Even better place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, one last question before we end. Uh, I noticed that you have uh, quite a few Israelis around you at Flex. Uh, so I have to be a little direct and uh, <laughs> ask, how come there are so many Israelis uh, holding senior level positions at uh, like an American multinational company such as Flex? Yeah. Yeah, you're actually right. Your observation is correct. We actually have a lot at senior levels. And, um, you know, the, the answer to that is pretty easy. I mean, we don't pick people to run things because they're American or Chinese or Indian or black or white or anything else. I mean, we pick them because they're good. And we've actually, we have a big presence in Israel. It gives us a great place to pull talent from. But, you know, if I think about the, the culture of Israeli people um, in terms of how I find them, I find them to be unbelievably hardworking, really smart, really practical. Probably more than anything else is, you know, if there's a barrier, they like break it down better than anybody I've seen. And I like people that don't stop until they accomplish the objective. And um, so we've just found a whole bunch of Israeli guys that, that um, share those kind of attributes. You know, just real smart, real aggressive, real practical, real straightforward, and, and get the job done. And, and um, Sometimes it's a pain in the ass to manage them, quite frankly. <laughs> but um, at the same time, I'm, I don't want to manage a bunch of sheep. I actually want to manage the forward-thinking guys, the guys that want to break down barriers, the guys that actually want change, and the guys that can actually get the job done. So, you know, if those are the kind of guys um, that Israel produces, it's like, they're welcome to uh, Flex Toronto. Welcome to Flex. Thank you. Uh, well, our time is up, uh, so we have to... Uh, and now, but uh, I'd like to thank you, Mike, for uh, joining us and sharing your thoughts and ideas. Uh, we're very proud to have Flex in Israel. Uh, you're an example that you know multinational companies in Israel can have the complete package, including innovation, design, manufacturing, even logistics. And we wish you continued success in and Israel and globally. Thank you. So thank and, and hopefully, you know those guys out there with uh, with the new businesses. Hopefully, we can help you scale around the world. So it's not just about Israel. It's about Israel being the access point into where your big markets are everywhere in the world. So love, love to help companies do that. Thank, Thank you. you very much.